we all know that we are all in the cosmos. But then again, the cosmos is also within us, right? Hello, everyone. I am Palit here, your cosmic detective for today, um, mentored by my cosmic guide, Dr. Graham Lau, this YSP BMC 2023. And today I'm here to share about an endless cosmic detective story with you all uh, about my search for phosph uh, phosphorus and uh, science of life. And remember that all that is phosphorus is not life. We all know that we are made up of star stuff, the elements that were formed in the core of the stars. And certainly the six elements, the Schnapps elements, carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, phosphorus, and sulfur makes around 97% of all of the cellular mass of life as we know it here on Earth. And then there are around 75 to 77 more elements that adds to our biological functionality. But then again, life requires the organic stuff, the liquid stuff, namely water uh, for life as you know it, and the energy to drive those reactions for life to exist. Coming to my motivation at the very beginning, that what motivated me to work this summer uh, with Dr. Uh, Graham Lau is the life detection knowledge base, a great initiative by the uh, <clears throat> NASA uh, Network for Life Detection. And certainly it's an online uh, repository of knowledge about uh, potential biosignatures categorized into different sections as per chemistry and activity and structure. My work was basically on the chemistry part under elemental ratios, the Schnapps elements, basically on the P of the Schnapps, that's phosphorus, the phosphorus biosignatures. And the best parts of the LDKB being the background section to give an overview to a reader of the inputs and the pro and con arguments of the potential biosignatures backed by the very fundamental thing about science that's evidence, at least one evidence from a professionally reviewed scientific literature. And then there is also a scope for anyone to sign in at this particular knowledge base as a user and comment, and also keep this particular knowledge base updated as newer and newer research comes in, in the domain of biosignatures. One special thing I want to mention here is the criteria according to which the arguments are listed is the biotic factors and the abiotic factors, because there can be both arguments that can be put, put up that how a particular signature is generated through biotic or abiotic mechanisms. After all, that provides the justification of my title that all that glitters or signatures is not life or gold, right? So, Coming to phosphorus, phosphorus is rare, very uh, low in concentration, 0.0007% of the universal matter, but then it's important for life as we know it. It uh, plays a great role in terms of the covalent formation, uh, covalent bond formation with other atoms and also highly reactive and therefore remains in combined state and not in free state. From the uh, sugar phosphate backbone in our DNA and RNA, our nucleic acids, to the, uh, you can say, the uh, hydrophilic heads in our cell membrane, uh, in our phospholipids that form the compact structure of our cell membrane that protects the cell, to the uh, phosphorylation method that adds the phosphorus to proteins, and uh, which further goes on to regulate the gene transcription, as well as enzyme activation and many more things, it's all about phosphorus. So phosphorus is important for life. And that comes to the, there we come to the next question, the toolkit for a cosmic detective. It's the astrophysical or the remote data that we get, and then the in-situ sample collected. Again, the laboratory simulated experiments are important to study, and also the different pathways uh, of how chemical uh, reactions happen to produce a particular product or molecules. So this trial basically is a toolkit of any cosmic detective, or you can say any cosmochemist or astrochemist in general. Now, any detective story has the network of understanding the suspect, the clue. How did I find out the clue? The clue was found out using bibliographic data of 20 years of research from 2003 to 2023 from uh, databases, namely the Web of Science, Scopus, and PubMed, uh, three of the main ones. And uh, I tried to find out what are the potential phosphorus uh, uh, chemical compounds or chemical molecules that can be considered as biosignatures and has done study has been done on it. This is the bibliometric outlook. Based on these keyword combinations, I took out literature and fed on the boss viewer software to generate this particular network. Obviously, if you want to know more details, I can obviously share at the end of the presentation without doubt, but here's what I got. I got the two suspects, 
biosignature connected with phosphorus and phosphine and phosphate. So phosphine and phosphates are main. Again, for scopus, it's the same thing. And for PubMed, guess what? The same results arise. It's not a coincidence. It validates my study and also reduces the bias because it's not a traditional literature review. And certainly anyone who is extremely experienced can also find out loopholes, which is not in my case at the moment, at least. So my two suspects and my case studies begin. My case studies for the suspected molecules, phosphine and phosphates, I consider Venus for uh, phosphine and Enceladus, the moon of Saturn, uh, for phosphate. Here are my arguments and the supporting evidences. I think the phosphine on Venus, a very spicy topic of research for the last five years at least, that has fueled much in, uh, curiosity towards Venus research. Many of us in the audience know about it, but still it, it demands a place in the LDKP, which I, what I believe at least. So phosphorus, the first pro argument comes up that phosphorus is an indication as a sign of life on Venetian clouds, 50 kilometer above its surface where the temperature and pressure conditions are similar to that of Earth. The evidence is the uh, single line uh, millimeter wave, ba uh, wave band spectral detections as reported by the James Clark Maxwell Telescope and Atacama Large Millimeter Array uh, Telescope data in the discovery paper supports that. And also the analogical studies with respect to Earth on Earth hydrogen is less. And also the uh, majority of the, you can say phosphine here on Earth is produced by life forms like the anaerobic uh, microbes. So that are present in the wetlands and the animal guts. So uh, in the absence of any geochemical or photochemical mechanisms, obviously this remains a third option. And just to point out, the discovery paper claimed that it can be a potential sign of life and not life. Many misinterpreted it for your kind information. And then um, another con argument to this comes up that the high concentration of sulfuric acid in the Venetian clouds doesn't support any kind of life. Even the, uh, you can say, most harsh uh, conditions surviving extremophiles that we know on Earth. So how is it possible? Along with this comes the spicy controversies. One line of data that is not statistically significant, then abiotic production mechanisms, but uh, many explanations came, but not that satisfactory enough. Then even SO2 uh, was kind of attributed for this, not pH3 or a phosphine. And lastly, the most important, the data was made public and many researchers and scientists across the globe analyzed it using their own data analysis techniques and many recovered the signal, many, uh, uh, but then they attributed it to SO2 and many didn't recover the signal. They didn't get any kind of signal from the data analysis. I think that in this controversial case, only future study can direct more clarity on this. One of the most uh, astrobiologically significant mission is the Rocket Lab's mission, the first private mission to Venus in collaboration with um, MIT that will try to investigate and collect samples, in situ samples from that same region. Let's see what the future research reports for us. That's it with my first case study. Coming to Enceladus, the watery moon of uh, Saturn. And this is the one and only, the mission of the first, the cassini Huygens mission. There's no doubt in that, one of the best missions till date. Coming to my pro argument for the biosignature, the phosphate um, in the Enceladus waters, the evidence being recently published that uh, Enceladus in its plumes, uh, we found that uh, data uh, detecting, you can say sodium phosphate or sodium monohydrogen phosphates as well, based on data of the cosmic dust analyzer in the Cassini spacecraft. And then again, uh, we have another con argument to this, that maybe it's an inorganic form of phosphorus uh, that is produced from a source like hydroxyapatite mineral that's found in lower temperatures basically and combines with alkali metals uh, or alkaline earth metals like calcium. Here we found sodium, uh, uh, you can say connection. Another part is the presence of energy source that's due to cryovolcanism in the interior of uh, Enceladus. So energy is present water is present, and even chemical source is present. Maybe life is present there. The three essential elements of life to exist is there. But that also is a question to be directed by future research. And the only one of its kind till date to be launched next year, the snake-like robot, the Exobiology Extend Life Surveyor by NASA, that will try to investigate into the subterranean waters of the Enceladus. And let's see what the future research reports. And I think here we can conclude, we can all come to the same page 
that both abiotic and biotic factors are necessary to delve into and both sides of the argument need to be distinguished uh, clearly uh, to finally conclude whether something is a true biosignature or a false positive. It would not be an exaggeration on my part to mention that the LDKB or the live detection knowledge base can be a one-stop storehouse of information about different signs of life, presenting all sides to an argument supported by evidence, the very basis of what science is. This can further direct future cosmic guides or current future uh, cosmic uh, guides, like uh, my mentor, Dr. Graham Lau, and also an aspiring cosmic detective my, like myself to actually know what to look out for and eventually pave the way for the cosmos to finally know itself. Do not fail to check out the website, the ldfknowledgebase.com, uh, and also sign in for free to also contribute. We need more cosmic detectives. And certainly, I thank you all for this wonderful opportunity and this uh, for your patience. I'm open to any kind of uh, questions and uh, positive criticism with regard to the content of my presentation. Thank you very much. Fantastic. Wonderful job, Sinisaka. That was awesome. I see Sanjoy's hand is already up. Reminder for everyone, you can ask questions. Just raise your hand um, in the participants entry. There's a place where you can you can click on to raise hand. Um, go ahead, Sanjoy. Hey, Palit, thank you for this presentation. I, I thought it was extremely clear and your delivery was fantastic. It's, it was obvious to me that you took the coaching advice that we gave you last week to heart and improved the presentation substantially. I really appreciated your enthusiasm for the topic as well. So just not a Thanks question, a but a comment. Really, uh, really nice job. Thanks a lot. Cool. If there are other questions, go ahead and raise your hand. I'll ask one of my own um, since you've been using the knowledge base now and we're trying to, to think about potential biosignatures and looking for these signs of life out there, for looking for phosphorus or sulfur molecules, iron minerals, all these different things from chemistry and, and structure and activity, the environment is, is so crucial for what we're looking for. So I'm, I'm glad you had these two cases, one of them being kind of an atmospheric potential biosphere and the other one being a subsurface ocean potential biosphere. Um, for yourself, I, I wonder, which of those two do you think is more likely to have life based on the potential biosignatures we've found so far that we think are possible? Are you more a fan of the, the Venus camp or the Enceladus camp? Okay. Uh, if there are, uh, I divide this question into two parts. Lens. One is that which I consider uh, is uh, more potential to have life. Another is uh, like which I'm a fan of because there are two different answers actually to me. One is for the first question, I go for Enceladus because there's energy source as well. There is uh, this uh, chemicals uh, source as well and water. And it's based on the type of life we see here on Earth. But then again, I'm a fan of Venus personally. First of all, it's near to us, yet mysterious enough. <laughs> and uh, personally, I have been, you can say, uh, from my very first poster presentation last year, I have been, uh, you can say, working on Venus only. So, uh, and starting with phosphine only. So personally, working with Venus, it is kind of a connection with Venus. So I'm a fan of it, at least. Awesome. I think we have time for one more question. Priya, you have your hand up. Yeah, yeah. I just because um, it sounds like both of the last these last two talks have been uh, literature based or or you know bibliography based research, which is absolutely fantastic. I always love it when people go to primary resources. Those of you who know me know that that's sort of my mantra so to say. Um, I just wondered why you chose 2003 to be the starting point. How come you didn't go back further? Is that Was that just to keep it things simple? Uh, you mean, uh, why didn't I consider the uh, previous literature before 2000? Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, basically, like uh, initially I considered, um, like what's presented is not, it's just the, you can say, uh, the final result. Initially, I considered a lot of, you can say, uh, keyword combinations. That time, it was coming, a, uh, a lot of results were being generated, means from cosmobiology to even, I considered uh, phosphorus and uh, chemistry, phosphorus and biology, and many more things. So initially, I thought that I would consider just five years of research, but uh, I was aware about, means like this bibliometric outlook uh, requires both approaches, like the traditional literature review is a necessity, but this technology enhances our capability to visualize that research and uh, better analyze and validate our work. So 
uh, initially when I was taking five uh, years, I was not sure whether phosphorus study was done beforehand or not. Then I took uh, 20 years, uh, but um, I thought that maybe it would not be, uh, it would be a lot of work to take, uh, frankly, before 2003 as well. Not Short much summer. that does take up. Even these results actually, uh, phosphine and phosphate are very recent. Like phosphate came up this year, phosphine in the last five years or so. Thank you.